So I've got another panel antennas for us to take a uh, quick look at today. I uh, purchased this one off of uh, Amazon and it's sold by uh, Crazy Pony and it had one review where the uh, it had a slightly negative review saying that uh, it rattled when you shook it but uh, this one definitely doesn't rattle. I uh, picked it up so we can take a look at the inside because apparently this is a uh, 14 dbi panel antenna and uh, some of the panel antennas we've taken at uh, a look at recently have been nowhere near that 14 dbi so i'm hopeful this time that this one is indeed around that 14 dbi claim so before we take a look at the inside then i'll take it over to the test bench and uh, do the couple of tests on it like uh, i have done previously with the uh, other panel antennas and hopefully it will give us a indication of whether this is 14 dbi or close to it so the test setup is exactly the same as the previous uh, panel antennas that we tested and remember the best we got from one of those is where i modified and combined two panel antennas into one we got uh, 20 uh, milliwatts with that one under test and the worst we got with one of those uh, cheap panel antennas was uh, around 4.5 uh, milliwatts i believe so i'm hoping that this is going to be around the uh, 17 18 19 milliwatts certainly if it's uh, you know operating around 14 uh, dbi of gain then it should be up there you know it may be even 20 so let's give it a shot and see what happens So it seems to have settled on uh, 18 milliwatts, so 18 and a half milliwatts there, so not bad. I mean, uh, this uh, is probably the first panel antenna I've got in, this year at least anyway, that uh, is performing around about the uh, 14 dBi than it claims to perform at. So, you know, not too shabby at all. So let's have a look at it on the spectrum analyzer and hopefully that will be just as good. So here it is under test then, so let's take a look at the output on the Spectrum Analyzer. So we've got the Spectrum Analyzer centred down here, this is the centre line at 5.48 GHz here. And we've got this beautiful frequency response bang on that centre line down here. Quite wide band across the Spectrum here, but you can see it's uh, probably the best frequency response we've seen from a uh, panel antenna, especially this year. So uh, this isn't uh, too bad at all, I mean it's best frequency response is just here but uh, you know it is quite broadband along that spectrum there so it should work quite well and it does seem to be around the uh, 14 dBi that's claimed as well. So it doesn't seem too uh, shabby at all so I'm eager to get inside here and have a look at the uh, elements themselves but it's definitely 14 dB on the back and uh, from those tests it does seem to run at around uh, 14 dB. Now to get into this I think it's all glued down so I don't want to break the case if I don't have to. It's looking interesting at the minute, it looks like there's two PCBs in there. So it looks like uh, one of the previous uh, panel antennas we took a uh, look at when uh, it seemed to have uh, some Yagi uh, characteristics to it but this one performs uh, a lot better than uh, that one did so let's uh, remove these screws get it out of its case and take a closer look at it. So as for construction then this one seems to be constructed uh, much better because the case itself is made for uh, this particular antenna because uh, the screw uh, points here are actually mounted on the case and uh, you know these little thread bits here come through the PCB so it's not like they're using a uh, generic case to hold this in place. So you can see here now those uh, posts, those screwing posts here, the three of them holding all the uh, PCBs in place and then the screws screw down into those to uh, hold everything together and uh, we've got these uh, little spacers here, I'll have to check when we get it to uh, all uh, disassembled and check it against that previous one because this one does look like it uh, produced a better signal than the previous one did. So now that we can see all the components of this antenna then it does look uh, rather nice. We've got the uh, reflector on the back which is uh, tinned off and the uh, driven elements have got tin on them as well, a tin finish to them. Uh, this is uh, a black PCB. I think I'm not sure whether this is a black PCB 
oh that's a black solder mask on there and then we've got the two uh, parasitic type elements here and here but uh, as far as the uh, construction quality goes I'm really impressed with this I mean this case is definitely made for uh, this antenna so you know not a generic case they've really uh, put some time and effort into uh, the finishing touches of this antenna so just comparing the top layer of uh, parasitic elements from uh, this antenna here they do seem to be a little bit wider apart than these ones here they look to be the same size but they look as if they're positioned a little bit wider apart and as I said in this video you know we managed to get it closer to its center frequency by modifying the distance between the parasitic elements but you only have to be uh, you know half a millimeter out at these kind of frequencies 5.8 gigahertz and you can knock it off its center frequency and take it out of that sweet spot but it does look to be a little bit wider so I think the best way to check these is to uh, shine a torch through and uh, see if they uh, line up because they don't look as if they line up to me and you can see here that they definitely do not line up the uh, first one we took a look at the uh, cheaper one is definitely uh, not in line with these squares here so this top one is the uh, cheaper one and this is the one that we're taking a look at now so these uh, two squares here and here are a little bit closer to the center than these two and uh, you know something as uh, small as that an error as small as that can make a difference and knock it off its center frequency so let's take a look at the uh, second parasitic elements then the circles and see if they line up so here you go then the uh, circle ones are also just off just by that fraction so I think that fraction could have uh, just been you know the coup de grace and why this uh, first one that we took a look at was slightly off its center frequency that one's off by quite a bit down here in the corner and taking a look at the uh, main driven elements here they do seem to match up so it's the uh, parasitic elements that have the errors in them and basically the layout of the traces is exactly the same as each other so could be possibly be that they've just gone and copied this design and uh, in copying that design they've got uh, a couple of small errors in the uh, parasitic elements here by copying it and that's just not their antenna off centre frequency just by that uh, fraction just being by a fraction out of there because I was uh, going to uh, take another look at uh, this one here and uh, start by uh, reducing the size of the driven elements by about half a millimeter and uh, testing it but uh, I think now all that uh, the problem was with this one is uh, you know these parasitic elements are out by uh, you know a fraction of a millimeter maybe half a millimeter they don't quite line up as accurately as uh, this one does here so this video turned out a little bit differently than uh, I anticipated first of all we got some really nice results on the test bench with this and then uh, you know a bit of a surprise uh, when we opened it up to find that it's uh, the same design as this one here and uh, now we know why uh, this one was a little bit off it was because the uh, parasitic elements weren't lined up properly or weren't etched properly on the board to line up properly so a simple mistake like that can uh, completely uh, wreck the performance of an antenna so I'll put a link in the this description of this video again to the artwork I made previously because uh, that artwork was uh, copied exactly from this one and uh, I did have all my uh, elements lined up I only took the uh, you know the uh, dimensions of the elements and placed them on the board themselves for the uh, you know the artwork so they will all line up so if you were to produce that then uh, you'd have a nice working antenna because this one works uh, absolutely beautifully and uh, as I said the price difference from uh, this one to that one um, I can't remember off the top of my head but I'll put it up on the screen now I think you're only talking uh, £1.50 £2 possibly
So again an interesting design just like uh, the previous video was but uh, this one is working so if you were to purchase this one then uh, you know it would work fine for you I've got no doubts about that. Um, the uh, feedback in the description on the Amazon page rattling possibly down to uh, one of the screws not tightened up properly maybe one of the uh, you know PCBs was rattling inside there uh, that might have been the cause for that but um, you know as an antenna and uh, a panel antenna it's linear not circular polarized but um, you know if you wanted a linear setup on your quadcopter you couldn't go far wrong with this and it certainly seems to be 14 dbi in gain so i hope you enjoyed this video uh, it was a, a bit of a surprise video i uh, you know i like to find uh, little uh, you know surprises now and again when i purchase these antennas and test them certainly got a surprise with this one but uh, any comments or questions drop them below i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one